Hello everyone, this is Triple Valve Metro Camel. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If it's your first time joining the, the channel today, watching my video, um, deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope at the end of this video, it'll give you some inspiration, some ideas for your own little projects. And for you guys and girls out there that normally join my channel, thanks for watching again, much appreciated. Okay, so today I thought I'd do something a little bit different, um, as opposed to just doing videos of uh, loco reviews and bits and pieces on the layout. I'll actually show you something getting done in progress which I think is more encouraging to people if you see something actually being done in progress it gives you a bit of interest and also some ideas of your own so grab yourself a tea and coffee or beverage of your choice and something nice to eat and I'll see you in the mo all will be revealed Okay, so our little project today is going to be it's going to be weathering a set of Hornby Railroad Range tank uh, wagons. Now I've had these quite a while uh, when I first built the layout about two years ago and I got them from Hattons and they're really nice and cheap uh, in terms of price and also they're, they're quite um, robust as well. But they're also a great little medium to work with if you want to weather wagons for the first time. Um, if you're a little bit nervous about going out there and buying a nice set of Backman uh, wagons that are really expensive and you want to weather them yourself and you're not quite sure to uh, have a go at that, um, I'm really, really pleased with Hornby's Railroad range because I think it's a great little brand for customising and doing your own little things with it without having to go too much over the top budget-wise in terms of cash. So again, we're going to be using these railroad uh, tank wagons today as our project. And all we're going to do is just respray them because these are too modern for my layout. Um, if you sort of have a 19, sort of 80s, uh, 1990s layout or up-to-date layout, this might be great. But for a 60s layout, early 60s layout, you certainly wouldn't have um, some of these logos on the sides and these colours. Um, definitely not. There'll be a nice black, uh, weathered, um, oily. Uh, uniform finish. So we're going to go for something like this today and just basically respray them. So that's our project for today, the railroad, railroad range wagons. And I'm going to show you what we're going to be using. So, put those to one side. So the first thing you'll need is, oh, keep the camera, nice, um, <laughs> white spirit. This is uh, standard white spirit I picked up off eBay for a couple of quid. As you can see I've got through that quite a lot so far. This is definitely, you will definitely will need some of this white spirit. This is mainly for your cleaning of your airbrush gun afterwards, which I'm going to show you how to do uh, the second part of the video. I'll show you the airbrush in progress, and also I'm going to show you how to clean it as well. So if you're not too sure about how to go about airbrushing in general, it's your first time, a bit like myself, then we can jump in this project together, and hopefully it'll give you some more confidence to do your own ideas afterwards. Okay, so we've got our white spirit, which is there. <clears throat> you will also need... You don't need vanilla ice cream, by the way. <laughs> We're not going to airbrush with the vanilla, vanilla ice cream. Not a good idea. But what we can use is the container. You will need the container because when you come to clean your airbrush, you will need a nice deep container to put all the little parts in and soak them in some white spirit. So you'll need a nice deep container. So it saves everything getting lost and also keeps it nice and clean. And it acts also as a cleaning bath, where you can put about this much fluid in here, say, and just sluice it around and clean all your little bits and pieces that I'll show you again later on. So you'll need that. Um, this actually came with the airbrush compressor set originally. It's a cleaning pot, a three-in-one cleaning airbrush pot. And also you've got a little stand here for the airbrush, which is handy. Again, I'll show you that how that works later on. So you'll need that. Put that up there. Now, this is what really what does the job. You'll need these parts, obviously. Um, this is a... Uh, modeling table, a turntable as you can see it rotates thus so and the idea is you put your loco rolling stock on there and you can just turn it around by hand rather than picking it up and getting paint on your fingers and ruining your finish so you need one of those obviously and you definitely definitely will need some of this stuff, this is kitchen roll, standard kitchen roll um, again go down to the pound shop or the cheap shop and you can get loads of this stuff but it is great and you will need this to clean your airbrush gun um, as mentioned later on and from a safety point of view 
you need one of these. Um, this is a sort of a cheapy um, paint spray mask I picked up off eBay for about just under two quid. It is cheap, but I've tried it out and it does do the job really well. It keeps those fumes away from your lungses, which is what you want. So you need a good or reasonably decent mask um, when you're spraying indoors. So you need obviously one of those. Uh, you'll also need some of this, which is Humbrol Acrylic Varnish. Now, the reason we use this on our projects is because I tend to use it because if you, you, you do a paint finish on a model, you put a lot of effort into it, and the last thing you want to do is pick it up or scratch it and that paint starts coming off and all your hard work just disappears. So you want to give it a nice, very one to two, very fine, light coats of this stuff. When it dries, it will protect all your paint work, so you'll need that. And we'll also be using some, again, plug for Humbrol, um, Humbrol Finners, which you'll definitely, will definitely, definitely, definitely have to use with your paint, because um, the paint we're going to be using today is Rail Match um, brand paint for our little job here, but it comes out rather thick, so you don't really want to apply it too thick, you want to thin it down, so you want to add some thinners to your paint mix, so your chosen paint. And what else do we need? We also need some of this, which is the airbrush gun cleaner. Now you can use white spirits by the way but I tend to use this separately for my airbrush gun afterwards when everything's nice and clean I put a little drop of this in the actual airbrush gun itself and just spray it through and clean everything nice. Again I'll show you how to do this as well so don't panic. And you'll also need some of this which is standard masking tape. You can buy this from any DIY shop um, or pound shop whatever. This is standard sort of thickness masking tape. This is great for masking out windows and any areas of your model that you don't want paint to get onto. A little bit of time and effort with this stuff, it does do the job. So perfect, you need some of that. And more importantly, we can't get nothing done unless you have one of these. This is our airbrush. This is an Iwata and it's an Eclipse model and it's the HP series CS. And this is absolutely the mutt's nuts. This is really a nice airbrush. Um, as mentioned in my previous video, um, the airbrush I got originally with the compressor over there wasn't very good, so I invested in one of these. And this is providing a look after it and keep it clean. This will provide many, many, many years of service. So a good, decent airbrush is definitely a good investment if you're going to get into airbrushing. And last but not least, you need the big guns you need a decent compressor which is a thus one of these now as mentioned this is um, a compressor that was manufactured by a company called ROHS which again you can look up on eBay and online I believe now this compressor is a pretty decent compressor because it's got a bottom tank now when you're looking for a compressor for the first time and you're not sure what to get there are loads and loads of videos out there on YouTube which you can check out but most people do recommend that you have a compressor that's got a bottom tank because the great thing about it is this will hold your air capacity um, in here so basically when you start spraying with your airbrush at the correct pound per square inch rate it will hold the air pressure in the tank nicely without having to kick in the compressor all the time the compressor will only kick in and this tank starts to run a little bit low and it's pretty simple and easy to use you've got obviously there's the main tank there's the piston driven compressor it's all free as well uh, you've got an on off switch there and obviously here's your little uh, PSI gauge on there which you can basically adjust the pound to square inch ratio once it's plugged in and going I've got one set on about just over 20 on here which is just slightly over 2 bar which works very nicely with my airbrush. Okay, and obviously there's your airline that goes with it. Now, I'm gonna stop waffling on about the te technical bits and I'll take you into the, the area we're gonna be spraying today and we'll get going. So, sit back and enjoy this. <laughs> See you in a moment. So we've got our paint ready to go and we're going to be using Rail Match uh, paint and it, the colour we're going to be using today is Weather Black. 
So what we do, we just take this pipette and just suck up that one load in there. Get it all in there, like that. And then we'll go for another one. Like I say, it's quite thick, so it really takes quite a, an effort to get this paint loaded up in this pipette here. So that's really, I use about say two. Two is pretty good. And just wipe the access. Oops, it's coming on the other side, it's easier. There we go. Just wipe the access off on there, like that. That to one side, put your lid on your paint so it doesn't fall everywhere, the last thing you want. And what I'll do with this now, I will then put this in a container of some white spirit so we keep it nice and clean. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now we're going to add our thinners. So again, I was match uh, equal for equal, 50-50. So we're going to put, that's one pipette. And two in there like that. Okay. Now. I'll show you a nifty little trick. Let's put that down there out of the way. And I'll pet out of the way as well. Now, here's a cool little thing. If you press down on, put your finger over the needle and just gently press down, what it does, it mixes up you see that? You need a little bit of pressure on the gun there. And what that does, it churns the paint up and the thinners together and really mixes it nicely, as you can see. You only need to pull back a little bit on the stick, not too much. And that's aerating the thinners and the paint together so you get a nice, nice consistency. What you want ideally with your paint mix is, is a bit like milk in consistency. That's the kind of thinness you want to go for. Okay, that's pretty much done. So all we're going to do now is pop the cap back on, like so, voila, and she's good to go. So we'll just put it over there, and I'll put my mask on, put the extract fan on, get the wagon out, and we'll get going. Oh, by the way, before we get going, um, I've stripped all the wagons, I've took the chassis off. I've took the chassis and the wheels, so I've just got the plain bodies, because I want to do something really nice with the the chassis part onwards uh, with these wagons I want to do them a different colour probably put some frame dirt and some sleeve grime around them as well but we want to definitely spray these up so let's get going
Okay, as you can see, I stopped the video before. I didn't want to record um, me taking ages to do the three wagons, but we've done all three as it is, basically. Um, letting these dry now before we do the next stage of the weathering. But the basic colour has now been changed, as you can see. It's just drying now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you through how you clean your out airbrush gun. So, first thing we do is we've got some residue paint left over in our airbrush, which we haven't used yet and it's still sitting in the paintbrush gun which is over there and what I've done as well, I've put some cleaning solution, some white spirit in our cleaning jar which is, whoop, there are we, he's there and all we're going to do is we're going to spray the residue paint into here and then I'll show you how we strip the airbrush gun and clean it so it'll be more helpful for you guys and girls out there who are new to airbrushing so, okay, let's just set the tripod where we want it, which is about there. And what we want to do is rub a seal all around there like that. And we're just going to pop that on there like that. Move that to one side. And just screw that on. Nice and tight. Now, um, you notice on here you've got a little rubber nozzle this is where the airbrush actually pokes into and when you pull back on the trigger all the paint goes in here and it's an easier safe way to disperse and discharge your paint without going everywhere else in the house so what we do pop our airbrush gun nice and snugly so the nozzle goes into there or so and just move this thing like that so you can see what's going on and you just basically push down the lever pull back and stick you should see the, the white spirit change colour Okay, so basically all the paint should now be discharged from our airbrush gun. Let's have a little look. It should now be empty. And yep, as you can see there, all that paint has now been discharged nicely from the cup. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn off the compressor, strip the airbrush gun, and I'll take you through how to strip this and clean it all nice and new so that your airbrush gun will be nice and new. What you don't want, never ever ever, with an expensive airbrush gun like this, never ever allow the paint to dry in there and sit in there for hours and hours. You want to clean this as soon as you finish with it. So I'll stop the video and show you how to clean it. Back in a moment. 